we move the town hall presentation update to after um, we hear, we do the East Calis ROW and hear from the treasurer and delinquent tax collector. Because that's not something, Donna and um, John aren't coming. They don't really need to come at the time. So we don't, the only people we're holding up is the people that are here. All right? Um, Alfred, updates, or you want me? To, I can. Okay. Um, I had some stuff. We um, were asked by FEMA and CVRPC to estimate the damage that we had from that weird storm a few weeks ago, where my house was out of power for like two days. <clears throat> And we came up with a grand total of two hundred and thirty dollars. What? I know. We well, didn't have more anything. than that in trees. Right? That sounds like at your house. Not that, no, not the two hundred thirty dollars was at my house, but the pain and suffering was at my house. I was going to say <laughs> it must have been some pain and suffering. Um, so that's been done. Um, Cliff and I met with Alfred on last week Monday, right? Um, we talked about an iPad, an iPhone, and Toby weighed in on the iPad. I know, he's getting really computer geeky here. Who's going to teach you how to use it? Toby said, sure. to I asked that question. Toby, Toby said he's going to. Okay. And the reason being, and I forget, Cliff, you priced them. They weren't outrageous. No. Um, but apparently, according to what Toby said, it can be uh, set up and provided through RB Tech. Right. And they can provide some additional technical support as well. Right. And the idea being that when Alfred's right out on the site, he can take pictures, he can update the inventory that we've had done. It will come in handy when we're um, doing the municipal roads general permit stuff, the stuff that's going to take effect in July, right? Yeah. Um, so we just wanted to let you guys know that that's, Alfred is going to be the geek now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the operator. <laughs> um, we talked about, you know, we just get a lot of questions about summer maintenance, just like we did about the winter maintenance. And I think that the Q&A that we did for the winter was well received, so I'm looking to do something similar to that for the summer that we can have here at the office that Alfred can have to hand out when he's going around telling people, you know, I'm going to be doing this work, you know, on your road. Here's the handout, and then it's generic, and it can be used instead of it having to be something that's specifically done each and every time. It's generic enough um, that it can just be handed out. Uh, what else do we talk about? Uh, we're working on with Alfred on the job descriptions for the crew, and we're going to base it not on like staff work, road crew one, road crew two. We're going to base it on years of service, like from the new hire to the first year. What do you, what does Alfred expect from that person within that year? Then maybe two to five years and then five to ten. And if you hire somebody that really kind of falls into the one two to the five time. year ones, then you have a reason to give them a higher incoming salary. So we, we talked about that. Um, we talked about mowing because we're not going to be mowing at the town hall because there's no reason to. Um, the Westons showed up here one morning to mow, and Judy said, oh, wait a minute. So I contacted the Westons and said basically in the emails in the Google folder if anybody wants to nice see it. Note. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Alfred was looking to buy a lawnmower to do some mowing around the town garage. So Alfred's going to delegate to one of the other road crew to, what did you say it would take maybe 10 minutes to do not around much, here? Right. Not much. So one of the road crew for now will do the mowing here. Yeah, if we own our own mower, we can somebody can do it on the weekend or an evening after work, or so it doesn't affect our roads. And we'll just even paying you know, our crew overtime, it's going to be cheaper. It's still cheaper. Yeah. Yes, and they're already covered by insurance, so we don't have to worry about that piece of things. Did you hear back from Tori? No, I didn't. Um. What else? What else? Um, 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 there's a local roads workshop at our very own town garage on June 7th, which is a Thursday at 8:30, and it looks it looks really good. I signed up for it. 
I know the whole road crew has signed up for it. Um, here's the information if anybody's interested. And last but not least, the chipper. <coughs> Alfred asked about the chipper and the way we worded the warning, if you remember, was we would not get the chipper if we didn't get the grant. We didn't get the grant. Okay. So I, 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 re I guess I understand why a chipper would be helpful. Um, but well, the I'm voters wondering, said. I'm wondering, are there other grants available possibly? Can I, I thought Toby had indicated that there's a possibility of another grant, grant? that might work. So, so let's get Toby on that. Well, and can we can we also use uh, use this as an as an opportunity to build the business case? By which I mean go through the torture, and I'm acknowledging that, Alfred, um, of renting and having to re whatever the issues with renting are, actually experience them. Right, so document, that, document. So them. you can document, you can tell the story from not a speculative perspective, but from a, okay, we did it three times last year, here's what happened. I rented it, uh, you know, in June, and I had to wait two weeks because there was a line, and then the day it was my turn, and I had it for three days, it rained every single day, and then I had to take it back. That was number one. You know, so you've got your real-life story to go along with your to, to build, you know, to tell build your, the case. But you tell your case at town meeting. I think that that adds weight to your. I understand it's it's undesirable, but being able to to share the personal experience of undesirability is powerful. Yeah. Well, we've got a project coming up, a grant to aid project on Jack uh, Apple Hill. That is going to require taking some trees out, uh -huh. and that would be a perf perfect opportunity to rent the machine mm -hmm. and right. have that have that experience because the grant will cover the rental. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. But we'll still have the proof. We'll still have mm -hmm. the, right. the, the documentation. Really right. So yeah. No, that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and any other time this any summer, other time. and any other time this summer, fall, you know, after these storms, all these weird storms that we have. And you've already had people calling the town garage saying, can I have some chips? Because people yeah. saw it on well, the... Think we got a chip people think we have a chipper and we don't. <laughs> because... Because <laughs> they want the chips. Well, and some people have been very happy to hear we don't have a chipper. Yes, there are certain people. Um, yeah, but well, I... Not counting you, They don't know about the windshields and the mirrors that we're buying either. And that's, well, I think you can document that, too. Argument. I mean, yeah. I've got the one ton of truck right now, and that last snowstorm was heavy and heavy wet snow, and I have to buy a windshield now for that. For that mm -hmm. That's part what of the What happened? With there that? was snow, snow hanging down on the trees, and the trees were like right over in the road, and mm -hmm. driving it hit, hit the hit the windshield. windshield. Yep. So we've got a broken. And we don't have insurance that covers glass. We've got a five hundred dollar deductible, and windshields probably. We should look at changing that. I mean, I got zero deductible on my cars. It's not that much more. Than that, yeah, we could check into that. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think I don't know if there's a if there's a policy strictly for glass that might be something to yeah. look into. Mm -hmm. But our policy is uh, covers everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. Most ac accidents right. are you know a lot more money than that. So a five hundred dollar deductible. So let's sense, make a note right. in the, let's make a note in the minutes that we'll check with our insurance carrier about what our what we would have to do to. Change our policy to include windshields. You probably have to have a chipper. It's usually, <laughs> I know on conventional car, you know, homeowner, home, whatever, passenger car insurance, right. and even on my truck, they have, um, you know, collision, they have liability, and they have comprehensive. Mm -hmm. Comprehensive is, you know, tree falls on your car, mm -hmm. you know, snow slides off your barn roof like it did and crushed my windshield and hood, and um, and, and and depending on what policy. You, you subscribe to you can either you can get different um, levels of deductible mm -hmm. and so it's it's a twenty dollars more a year for me to have zero du deductible on all my cars so that makes really good sense I'm wondering if that's available you know for a commercial policy well I think that's the yeah. note we're going to make yeah. in the minutes is to check that out it's a good idea John okay. can we hear um, 
It's been a whole year since we said we were going to mow twice for invasives, and then we're getting close to that. We, we put season. money in for two this million. year's budget. Right, it's in the budget. Twice. So that's going to start soon, I would think. Well, um, June? we didn't notify Doug Grout right away of that because it wasn't really. Um, but I talked to Doug last summer about doing it twice, and he didn't have a problem with that. Right. Well, I just talked to him a week ago, and he's gonna he's gonna give me a contract. Okay. And so I told him that we do want it twice a year. So I think he's gonna be able to pull it off. But he's he's signed contract with other towns, so. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tight for him to be able to do it twice. Uh, well, still, work. I'm not saying that he can't, but it right. just sounded in the conversation it sounded like it was going to be and hard for him. So what I'm saying is we we need to confirm that sooner. I think it's already con next year. yeah. Well, you need to confirm it with him, but I think it's confirmed on our part that we want it done twice a year, and we budgeted for that. But the timing matters. Right, it does matter. Right, so twice twice a year, you know, middle of. July and middle of August may not be worth it. Right. It's really about whacking them early. So and I'm not the expert on that. I'm much maybe Gene was I would assume it's different every year. This year it seems to be late. Mm -hmm. Everything right. growing is late. Mm -hmm. I mean we're already in halfway through May and that's right. The right. People are stuff. just beginning to mow their lawn, so all that's these right. all right. these things are late. Right. No, that's true. But but my point is only that we don't want we don't want I believe we don't want a mowing in August and one in October just so we can say we did twice. Right. No, we have to confirm right. what the right timing is for the invasives and what invasives right. so are we talking knows, about. Who knows what that time is? I think, you know, we're meeting with um, Joanne Correct. next week from this week. That's a good question for from Joanne Garten or Garten Garten. This week. Oh, that's right. It's this week, the 16th. Right. 16th. I think we could ask her. Mm -hmm. Let's ask good Joanne. Idea. Good idea. Or, or uh, Stephanie's committee. I mean, yeah. Sure. I mean, there's there's a bunch of different invasives that we're trying to right. conquer, so it's going the timing could be different mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on which species it is. Well, if we struggle, I think it is a good topic for the conservation committee to say, you know, we understand that half a dozen times might be ideal. We don't have that. No, we have two. No. So you tell us what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can ask the we can ask Joanne. We can ask the conservation commission to come up with. <clears throat> the timing of this mowing. Mm -hmm. Right. Good and, that, and then we can tell Doug and mm -hmm. see if he can fit it in. And I then going and then going forward, we'll have a better idea about the timing. It's probably going to vary by, you know, a, a couple of weeks here and there every year. But mm -hmm. to kind of get a better idea, better handle on it. Right. I, I think it's really good we're doing that. I'm just really glad we're doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it's costing us some more money, but I think it's, it's worth it's, it. We're doing our part. We are, and that matters. I mean, you know, the chipper, but then there's, <coughs> this, this really matters to people that we're managing our invasives. Yep. No, it's a big deal. Invasives are a huge deal. So, so I just want to be clear to understand. So we have a contract with Doug Grout. Not yet. It's a verb. Okay, so why are we so committed to Doug if he can't definitely meet our two two cuts per year. I'm not saying he can't, I'm okay. just saying that. But we need him to commit, and if he can't, then we should see if there's someone else available. Yeah, I know we've put it out to bid before, and we've never gotten any other bids besides Doug. Oh, that might be. Well, if That's we do, we have gotten other bids, but they're... They're you know, way high. Okay. Because this is town, he's right here. He, right. You know, it's cheaper for him just to right. drive his tractor to the site. And I know when I talk to him... I mean, he's when a great I, guy. I when I, well, when guy. I've talked to him, he's very concerned about the invasives and very interested in it. I mean, I, yeah. I, that's a good option. If he, can, if he can only pull off one mowing, then we'll, we'll search for somebody else to do, this, <coughs> to do the second mowing or vice versa. Yeah. So I guess it would depend on his, his schedule and I'll talk with him. I seen him at the store the other day and he said, hey, do you want a, a paper, mm -hmm. a contract? And I said, yes, we have one every year. So I said, we're doing two mowings this year. So then he was kind of saying, seemed surprised about that. Huh. So, oh boy. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure why he was surprised because we talked about it. Probably it's the same brain I have where it could be. Takes everything. <laughs> so I'll be meeting with him again and I'll <laughs> confirm his ability to to mow first right. twice. And, and we're meeting on we're meeting on you and Cliff and I are meeting on the twenty first. Twenty first. So 
we can maybe get an update from you yeah. on that day and maybe and by then we'll have met with Joanne I can talk to the Conservation Commission who I don't know when their next meeting is but they could put it on their agenda 17th. 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 Yeah. okay so can we talk about the truck a little bit? Yes, we would like to hear about the truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we do. Uh, I was gonna well, I don't have a lot, but I talked to him today. And who is that? Him is, is um, Billy Cleary, the owner of JMB. The new one, So right. he's, he is working on Navistar to come up with an answer. And what he told me today was just a rumor. It was just the service salesman was at his shop and told him that it was a rumor that Navistar was willing to pay 30% or a third of the cost of the repair. To put one of the same motors in. To put the, that's the only option we got as and, far as and, that truck. And, and, it, and I think I asked this before, but to be clear, they have not improved the motor that we have. You know, sometimes there are defects and then they, in installing new replacement motors, that, that those have improved and the defect has been, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't engineered. know that they've done any engineering on that. And that, that would be important to know. I mean, if the motors, had, you know, the defect has now been engineered out, right. it might look the same, I, but it's been cured. I'm and, afraid of that motor, to be honest. Yeah, well, me too, but, but, I, but I was thinking mm -hmm. we could put a motor in at discount and then sell the truck. I don't want to hang on to the truck either. Right. So I'm trying to figure out, it's hard to sell a truck that's just Doesn't have motorless. A right, but... With that said, we own the truck. It's our truck. We, you know, we bought a lemon, so to speak. Right. So we own it. We have to kind of. What my thought is is that if Navistar pays a third, JMB pays a third, the town pays a third, we all get out of it fairly easily. Oh, so you mean JMB might be willing to pay a third too? Right. I'm, I'm not. I didn't get vibes from him of that. but yeah. He's got to do something. I mean, right. He sold us the truck, yeah. right. so if he wants our business in the future, I feel like he needs to do something for us. I'm right. With you. Yeah. So that's where that's kind of the angle I'm going here. Mm -hmm. Once I, but nothing was finalized today. It was mm -hmm. just I called him up. I think I may have caught him off on, off guard, and I said I need an answer. Promised me he would call me back at two o'clock. My phone never rang. Yeah. So, so, so so to be clear, so let's say that scenario happens. Say they say that that's yeah. in the offing. They. Yeah. Navistar and J&B say, yeah, we're willing to go a third if you come up with your third. What is your thinking? We fix it and then trade it as a repair truck? I think if we put a new motor in it, we would let it run through its through its time here, which is one more year. Oh, really? I was thinking about trading it right off while it's got a brand new motor so it get the highest dollar. They'll say, wow, it's got a new motor that can put it on the lot, a well, brand new motor. Unless the right. new motor is And we might get a better thing. trade is what I'm saying. You Unless the new motor is the same thing that... Well, that's why it's another reason why just trade it as soon as they put the motor in. But we haven't... But the problem, I mean, that puts us in a, in a spot financially with our budget because we're not, we're not, we haven't planned for a purchase of a truck. Which is fine if we have, if we have motor no other again. If we have no other choice, yeah. then we're going to have to build that avenue. Right. But if they do fix the motor, or if they put a brand new motor in it, certainly it's going to last for a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be awfully surprising if a brand new motor didn't last a year. Well, it lasted five years. In the fact, the mo a brand new motor will have a warranty. It'll have, it will. It'll have a three-year warranty. Oh, okay. I didn't know that's, that. I mean, if, it, if it's a factory brand new motor. Right. Because every truck you buy, the the, mo the, the manufacturer gives a three-year warranty so anything that happens to that motor within that three-year period it will be covered okay because uh, this just to be clear because I've bought things that have had a warranty period say two years right. and like I bought a tool not to get into details but I bought a tool had a two-year warranty on it within a year year and a half the thing failed I called them they said no problem we'll send you a new one I gave them, I mailed them the other one back, or they repaired it or whatever. And I said, so now does that new one have a two-year warranty? They said, no, you get the remainder, the six months. Oh. So I just want to make sure. They yeah. may just give us the remainder because they're donating. Well, there is no remainder because right. And there is no there. remainder, so my, my concern sure. might be if we run this and then we take a risk, and now we wind up with a truck with a motor that we're, that's twice failed. That, that just... That's, right, right, right. Yeah. So, so the other option is, is also that we have for us is a, a used motor. So 
if we go with a used motor, I'm going to say, let's off that truck yeah. immediately, as right. soon as we can. Now we've got a running truck that is going to be worth mm -hmm. triple what we're being offered. I got a quote from Charlie Boys just out of the blue for that truck that's got a bad motor in it. Mm -hmm. $8,500. $8,500 for the truck the way it is with all the plow stuff. Oh, that's, yeah. That's it? Oh, that was with the blown engine. Excuse me, that was taking the plow stuff off and putting it on. And the, the, the body stick and the stuff with the body No, the body off. would come with the, to, into the new truck. Oh, okay. He gave okay. me a, a so quote for us buying a new cabin chassis for him, them taking the parts off of it, Yeah. and then they would give us $8,500. Yeah. For the blown motor and cabin. And how much would our one third share be of this motor we're talking about? It'd roughly? be ten thousand because it's we're at thirty two is the repair of a new motor. Right. It's a brand new motor. Okay. Now I'm going to explore more options. Yeah. Once I once I know what at Navistar is going to do. Right. And if that's not satisfactory, then I'm gonna go look into what J and B can do with this with the second hand motor. Yeah. Which then maybe they do the labor and we do the, we do the we buy the part the motor mm -hmm. and then we and then and we're then we, into twelve or fifteen thousand for a repair. right and then by the time all this happens it'll be almost time for snow again. Well, it depends on how we go. I mean, if they do replace the motor, it'll be faster than that. I mean, okay. they should be able to plop the motor in there in a couple weeks. Okay. All right, so, so, that's so stay tuned. That's not, yeah. that's not, right. yeah. I, I There's wish a few I decision more, points yeah. in there still we have to get right. to. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, are we Good ready luck. to? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I know you not can. fun. And, but it's very, it's very disappointing when he doesn't call me back. Right. That's Because I was supposed to have this answer last Monday, he promised right. me. So, right, because you were. a busy schedule, what I've got going, I didn't, I didn't pester him. So right. today was like a whole another week later, I, I pestered him. I well, I remember him. you said so, that when Cliff and I were there that you were going to be talking to him that afternoon. Yeah, and I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or no, I, I tried to call him and he was gone to lunch. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, left word, he needs to call me today. Mm -hmm. and that, uh, that yeah. Never happened, so. Uh, so I'm, I'm staying on it. I just, I, yeah. I, I would yep. assume no, after good. tomorrow I'll have a lot more information. Good, about good. That. Yeah, it's testing out your negotiation skills. Yeah, well, I, 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 I'm <laughs> trying to be nice and polite, but still get my point across. And mm -hmm. but you know, I still want them to do something for us. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good work. So hopefully, I'll have more. Yeah, nice work. Yeah. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you. Yeah, good job. You're but we do need a truck. We need to move. If right. if we're going to go with a new one, we need to be making that decision right away, mm -hmm. because a new one is definitely going to take until right. the fall to get it together. Because mm -hmm. it's two months to order it and two months to Right, get and we it. didn't get voter approval, so we'll have to think about how to, how to do this. Right. So anyways, are we ready to do the ROW, or do you have anything else? Uh, no, I think I'm good. <coughs> okay. Yeah. East Callis Church. Hi, Sandy. Hey. How are you? Good. It's a beautiful day, huh? It is. And hopefully, we have beautiful days for scraping and painting. It's supposed to be nice, I think. Thursday, yeah. Friday, but not Saturday. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday this week. Yep. Yeah. And I did talk to Alfred briefly about it, and you suggested that they were going to have to probably close the road. We're closed all around the church. Yeah. So you close it off right in front of Back Street, mm -hmm. and you close it off. Uh, where you come off of Route 14. Yeah. Right, and how so, many property, how many people is that going to affect that won't be able to? There's only. Was it La Rose? All you but they can go around. They go in by the, the, the store and on Back Street. They get to their houses. La Rose won't bother La Rose. No. Okay. They won't, won't bother, bother them. Anybody. They can still just keep the barricades away from their driveway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're fine. You know, the two people that might bother is they live in that, in the apartment building. Oh, they yeah. use that little garage that they park in. That's right. So there's Sarah. there's two Sarah, which for those three days she could probably park on Back Street, mm -hmm. um, and this time of year it's not going to affect us because it's, yeah. it's mainly winter where it bothers us out there. Right. So it's really just those two people that I could see yeah. would, would be affected. And have have you talked to those people, Sandy? Yeah, I have. Not. But they need to get in. We'll let them in. Yeah. 
Right. And that's the other thing. You just, if they want to come right. in you and just, you want to barricade, just right? barricade, right? Yeah. It's yeah. plastic. They move real easy. So right. Just, and right. you said they could use the town's barricades, right, Alfred? Yeah. yeah. Does the board have any other questions about this item? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to fill out directions, restrictions, and conditions. What highway number is that, Alfred? Do you know? Um, Marshfield Road is mm, I highway one. Look it up. But it's Marshfield Road because we have to put that on this yep. form. Marshfield Road um, project description. Um, you're going to be Scraping, Scraping and, painting. and painting, right? Yeah. <coughs> you got a lot of volunteers? We got a few. I think Saturday we'll have more. Right, yeah. We we can. Right. Yeah. Okay, so painting and scraping the church. And the con restrictions and conditions are to block off, block the entrance. Uh, block off roadway. Yeah. Block off Marshfield Road from Route 14. Yeah, that's good. So kind of a, for your own protection thing, or you're scraping the paint. Do you know if that paint's got lead in it? I don't think so, because it was painted back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alfred actually painted yeah, last Yeah, not too long ago. Yeah. It's 89 or 90 something. Yeah, it's been... So it's not in the 70s? Well, 15 no. years. No. no. Unless there was old paint from before, from right. prior, but it's been painted. You just got to be careful because you could, you're not having kids scraping. No. Nope. It's all adults. Yeah, we're still laying tarps down. And, and you're going to collect the chips. Yep. It's going to, yeah. And mask. Like, yeah, I got mask. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay, so block off Marshfield Road from Route 14 for um, May, tell me the dates again, Sandy. 17th, 18th, 19th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And five, nineteen. And you can use the the town, what are they called? Barricades. Bar barricades. <laughs> I would assume it would only be closed during the day. Yeah, we're going to work from eight to four or something like that. So then we'll open it right back up. So from eight to four? Yeah. I wouldn't put it exact time because some evenings you get really nice weather and, and we might stay later you might yeah. want to stay later yeah, i just so know because i know what i do daylight I'm hours during daylight hours there you go okay sa4 yeah, sa4 thank you judy during daylight hours okay anything else anybody have anything else all right, so we need a motion to approve. Wait, wait, so your, which, which road do you close off? I want to make sure I'm clear on this again. The, um, Marshfield everywhere Road. Everywhere we leave Route 14. Yeah. So that's both streets would be the one going to the right of the church right. and the left of the church. And that's still all called Marshfield Road. So do we have to worry? The reason I ask, I know Peg Bowen used to always remember we tried the one way, everything said, why, for my trucks, I got to go this. She goes back street. She's yes. going back, so she, she can still go back street. Yeah. Okay. Now, not saying that there wouldn't be a time when they may come right. or, or, right. or another truck for that matter. But if, right. but if you yeah. see some, if you but. see somebody, you'll let them through. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah. didn't well, want to more for the left. safety of, of the people that are working. Yeah. I mean, it's good to just. No, that's why I agree. I'm not. I'm not advocating. That's why I recommend sure. closing it just for because people come around there, they're not seeing somebody's painting. Yeah. You know, when you're painting, you're concentrating on the paint you're laying, not. Right. Not the cars around you That's and the right. lawnmowers going right. by you and whatever else, you know. Okay, I'm just going to put on here, barricades okay. will be moved if residents need access. Yeah. Do we need to put a notice on Front Porch Forum? I think to, we should. You, you're going to post in? something on Front Porch Forum, Sandy? Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Just a FYI, painting's going on this weekend yeah, at the please, church. And please note that, you know, the, the road will be... And feel Close. free to bring your paintbrush if you want to. That's right, right. right. That's a good idea. Use it for both. Now, did we make the church pay a fee? No. Okay. No, we waived it. Good. All right, so is there a motion to approve this ROW as we've discussed and noted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Hearing none, today is the 14th. And the property owner is the, um, the, members of the, the Woodbury United Church yeah, owns it, Charles right? Woodbury United Church. Okay, I'm going to send this around for signature, and um, Alpha needs to sign it. And then we can... Oh, that's the application. This is the... Permit. All right, I'm going to send this around for signature. And then, do you have to record it, Judy? Do you have to record this permit? Um, it needs to be filed in a certain way. I'm not sure it goes into the land. Right so we can scan it and right. email it to Sandra. Is that okay, Sandy? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. You have a way to print it off if you need to? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, have fun. We will. Well, I need that handy, those days I'm working down there. Do I need that permit down there? We'll we'll get you a copy. We'll scan awesome. it and send it to you before the, yeah. before the 17th. Yeah, if somebody comes by. Right. And they yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. I think that's it, right? Okay. Moving right along. 10 minutes of 8. Good. Um, we move the town hall renovation. Toby's not here. So let's move on to our treasurer. Join us, Madam Treasurer and Madam Delinquent Tax Collector. Hello. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Um, thank you, Sandy. This is uh, the profit and loss through the orders that you will sign today. So right. And they are right. Way. Pass them around. Mm -hmm. Here are the orders for signing, which I'll be putting around. Thank you. I think you all have one. Um, oh. I like it. Percentage of the budget. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very you nice. You are, with regard to general government, uh, the budget Percentage of buzz, uh, the percentage of budget used is in line with the percentage used at the same time last year. So you appear to be uh, We're going in a good direction. We're doing something right. You're yes, consistent. Of course. You're consistent. Um, your budget looks on target. Your income looks a little low at this point in time. Um, there's a grant that you budgeted for, the Hayden Road Bridge Grant. So those monies are not in yet. And that is uh, the, I would say, the largest shortfall that uh, income projections uh, will we, see. How do we find <laughs> out if that money is going to come in? Do you know? I don't know. Do you know? I'll call Shauna Clifford and mm -hmm. see where her process is. Because we'd like it'd be good to have that money right before the end of the fiscal year. It would be. Has does anybody know if that grant was processed, applied for? Oh, yeah, uh, it's all the, applied for. Was that a better? Granted. Was that no, a, that was a class two grant. An AOT. Class two V trans. And the work is all done. It's just you need to be reimbursed. So we're waiting on them. So okay. that's usually something Toby submits. It's all Shana? submitted. It's all in. We're oh. just waiting for. Oh. Do you have something until we could follow up on? Well, I'm thinking Alfred could follow up on. Yeah, it, I can right? call her. I yeah. Can call her often. Could you do that? I would. Sure. Thank you. So. so that appears to be the largest shortfall uh, okay. in income, and we still have six weeks to go. So I, I think we're okay to wait on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that the full 32-4 is what we're anticipating from the state? Right. Okay. Nothing actually jumps out at me in the general, mm -hmm. in the general government side of things. 
highlight, so I don't really have anything to point out to you at this point in time that should be of any concern. One thing you should know or be aware of is we still owe $90,000 for the balance of school taxes due to U32 and the what Callis is, Elementary School. What does that do? That will be due, you'll sign off on that at your next order. So um, that is by far and away your next, uh, your, mo your largest bill that mm -hmm. is going to come up and that pretty much bounces against your real estate tax line up at the top. So um, from a highway standpoint, again, the highway budget this year is fairly, is fairly well lined up with the budget at the same time last year. We're at 79% of the budget this year, 77% of the budget. We were at 77% of the budget last year at this point in time. Uh, just a quick note to the board, uh, no money was budgeted or appropriated for your highway reserve fund for fiscal year 18 or fiscal year 19. Um, the highway reserve fund. Correct, your highway equipment, equipment reserve fund. Appropriations and the amount of $25,000 were authorized in each fiscal year beginning FY14 through and including FY17. So it's just uh, it's just something to notice that wasn't done I this why year. You, but I thought we did it so that it was we didn't have to do it as an article every time. Well, what you did do in in, uh, thir in fiscal year thirteen, you create. Let me get that right. A town meeting in two thousand thirteen, and you created your reserve fund, mm -hmm. and at town meeting two thousand fifteen. You provided that the fund, any highway fund balance would automatically be applied to the highway equipment reserve, reserve fund yeah. until and when the town votes otherwise. Up to that point in time, you had been doing it on a year-by-year -year basis. Right, and now we know from Melanie what that amount is for this FY17, right? Right, and we'll get to that. Right. And while it is typically an, an arithmetic calculation, budget minus expenses, um, the bookkeeping system that we use does not really allow for that. So and our accountants were um, solicited to figure that piece out for FY17. And right, because using because we're using QuickBooks and we use Nemric. Well, QuickBooks yes, because QuickBooks does not carry forward your um, your your balances in the same way that Nemric does. Right. So the reconciliation that she made or that she cr figured today was twelve thousand five hundred eighty dollars would go from the was what remained or what is in your highway fund budget for FY17. So right, that's and just, that's different than what both Toby and Donna, and Donna had come up with. Yes. Thank you. But this is Thank why you. we asked Melanie from Father Gill to come in and, and figure this out and then hopefully going forward when we're using Nemric Will it will be established. It will, it, it will all balance out at the end. Right. We won't have to go through what <coughs> Sam just had to go through. So it, I think it's important to notice that with highway fund balances at as low as that, that you might want to consider in years mm -hmm. to come to either put an article back on appropriating monies to the Highway Reserve Fund mm -hmm. or uh, simply tucking it in the budget uh, as you did with your town hall, town office reserve fund that right. was right in your budget. The other um, comment that Melanie from Papago Zagali made was it would probably be prudent to do away with the automatic 
transfer of the highway of the highway fund balance to your highway equipment reserve the reason she didn't give a reason as an accountant she didn't prefer that technique but as your treasurer what happens with that is that money becomes restricted only only for the purchase of highway equipment whereas if the money float over into a highway reserve, you could use it for any purpose. Mm -hmm. Including equipment. Including right. equipment, so as long as it was for a highway purpose. Right, so it would change it from highway reserve equipment fund to just highway reserve fund. You, you could just, you would ju you could just, it, it, yes, you wouldn't even need to say that because any you wouldn't need to have an article that says that mm -hmm. with specificity because any highway funds are only to be used for highway. Right. So if we have a fund balance, a surplus, you might call it, um, that would be segregated. It would still stay in our checking account, mm -hmm. but it would be for the use of highway. So if they went over budget one year, mm -hmm. You would have that money to reach to, right? And it doesn't then necessarily impact your general government, which would have to make up the difference and tighten our own belts mm -hmm. mid-year if we had a bad year. Yeah, I mean, um, I think we've we've done that before. So it's just uh, it was kind of a loud absence for me when I took a look at this budget mm -hmm. uh, that there there were no funds uh, appropriated or budgeted for that purpose. It's it is done in other towns. And it might be something that you want to consider other than doing it by virtue of an article, mm -hmm. which leaves you no control over that money. I, I was surprised that at was the intent. That, that was wasn't the intent. Our, our idea, that article. It was, uh, came off the floor. There was a lot of debate that right. led up to that. But I do think the idea of not calling it just equipment makes sense because then if we go over, if we have a bad year and we have to buy more well, gravel or something. Well, if we have a big repair. Right. Or if all the washes out. Or, you know, right. It, it gives you more yeah. flexibility, I think. And then you have control over exactly what you are mm -hmm. investing in your highway reserve fund. And that can help you better plan for, it, it's my opinion, that that could help you better plan mm -hmm. uh, for your budgeting purposes in terms of uh, getting loans and figuring out yep. how you're going to pay. So that was, uh, what, what? those are my comments on the budget up we're to We're on this, we're on, usually, where is the line item for the Highway Equipment Reserve Fund? Uh, that you would find on a balance sheet and currently it's roughly $21,000. That's in there, mm -hmm. and then we'll add this twelve five eighty mm -hmm. to that a journal entry. That in and, okay. and so let's remember next cycle when we're doing the the budgets and the channel report and all that to you might want to consider idea. that. And yeah. if you do, if you budgeted for your highway equipment fund, it right tucked <coughs> right into the budget a line item. Yeah, I, I, you I, you might you, you probably would want to consider getting rid of that other article and just letting that money be highway money. By that time, you'll be in Nimerick mm -hmm. and that reserve will be well delineated. We will not need an accountant to figure it out for mm -hmm. us. It, the, the system itself is set up to do those checks and balances. Right. Yeah. And then you have that money as well to use as you need. Mm -hmm. So Good that's the point. budget report. Thank you. Good job. You're welcome. Are call. there any other questions? Just, this, is, this is a minor thing, but just odd, I thought. Sure. The, uh, the, on the very last page, the appropriation for the budgeted amount of $500 for the diversion. Three. What is it? The diversion, pro Washington County Diversion Program. Mm -hmm. 300. Five. Six, eight, six, zero. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and we only appropriated six. What did they, did they not? Did we budget more than they requested, or do we still have them? <coughs> um, it's uh, at sixty percent. Yeah, it's the only one that's at a sixty percent percent of budget. So, I am going to guess that they requested. That's um, that's my sounds like my phone. Oh. I'm sorry. I apologize. We'll just let that 
go for the moment. I thought the popcorn was done. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so nice, especially this time of night? Um, my guess is that happened at town meeting 2017. I'm going to guess that an appropriation was requested and it was adjusted downward. Is that what happened? I to that, I think, if I remember. Um, they, there was a year where there was a bump of um, diversion activity in Calais, um, and they requested more, and then it went back down. down. Oh, okay. so oh because your policy is your, your right. policy is based kids on consistent. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that that's. Okay. Put them to work painting the church. Yeah. <laughs> we can't do that anymore. Oh, oh right. There's we let them play on their laptops while they're, right. they're in the penalty box, oh, which they don't see any difference. Why do if the I parents are in the penalty box. if there was an explanation, I'm sorry, I, I was probably looking at something else, but do we have any sense of where the big what you know, how we got so far off? The you mean between what Donna and Toby came up with? Yeah, and what well, the is fifth, actually fifth there? between fifty-seven and twelve is is it's probably five thousand dollars. I I can't answer that. That is outside of my bailiwick. She, your accountant, went through your balance sheet, your profit and loss, pulled out the numbers that were appropriate, and did well, the I think, I think arithmetic. It's this. I think some of it had to do with the overage in the cost of the town garage. Yeah, that was that like was it. that was like double oh. what was appropriate, mm -hmm. what was originally appropriated, mm -hmm. right. and then there was um, that would have affected an earlier estimate about right. this over yeah. the surplus. Well, it wasn't, okay. There was there was a bill paid, and then there was something for else. equipment on on the new truck it was paid in full, where it should have been part of the loan. So that was, that took that took some of it too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it says North Callis Wall. Yeah, that went so. over. Right, but Plus, we got right. extra money from from the class two right. grant from the state for that yeah. for that overage. That wasn't didn't come out of our pocket. Yeah. So I, you know, I mean, I just curious. Yeah. yeah. This um this information. Frankly, came to me almost at the eleventh hour. Right. Yeah. So Melanie sent out the email. It, it, right today. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a little Quarter bit four. late. And uh, honestly, I think she worked on it quite a bit today. Mm -hmm. It was a forensic approach, and I had virtually nothing to add to it. Right. No, and that's what we that wanted her. And that's what we wanted her to do to get down to the nitty gritty. And right. figure this out because we had numbers bouncing back and forth. So now we know the number, and here we are. Awesome. That one went by a chipper. <laughs> that one went by a chipper. We want to get it, you know, get an appropriation. Five select board members swinging from the oak tree. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. So on that basis, I um, am going to uh, assume the select board. It, I'm not going to assume that anything. I, I'm going to ask the select board, will they endorse the number that Melanie has um, put forward? Mm -hmm. And if so, then we will go forward and close FY17 and then begin the process mm -hmm. uh, to close FY18. And convert to Nimerick. And convert to Nimerick as best we can. And un with the understanding, ultimately, all these numbers that pop into Nimerick will ultimately I believe be adjusted once the audit of these final numbers is uh, when we conducted. close out FY18 but we'll need to close out FY18 but we, we have to we, we first close out FY17 and then yeah. we can proceed right. to 18 right. so if this number we're not even to the end of 18 yet we have so. no reason not to accept this number right? no, no I, I, don't I, I can offer I can offer no opinion on this number or offer any reason why you should or shouldn't accept well, it other than right. this is your accountant, accountant and right. this is the person who has been working your books for several yeah. years yeah. now. Right. Yeah, and I know we've always trusted, you know, the former treasurer trusted what Melanie said and, and we always have. I think they do a good job. They haven't led us astray yet. I see no reason not to accept her final numbers as anybody else. Do we want to make a motion to do that? So it's in the minutes. So move. 
Second. $12,580. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you, Sandra. There's that popcorn again. This is my kid who's probably saying, can't you please buy me ginger ale on the way home? She was homesick today. Oh, no. I apologize. Oh, bummer. Oh, no. It's all fine. I understand. <laughs> um, what I'm passing out now is uh, a list by parcel number only. The outstanding delinquent taxes do Oh, so we're shifting to our today. delinquent tax report. Oh, yes. I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. I think I think Unless we can there's do any that. there's anybody else have any other questions? No? no. Just have to keep up. Okay, you have a different hat to put on. I am wearing. Can, uh, I yeah, should wear different fun. shoes for this part. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's why I. I think went to I passed in the forest to the guy. And just so you know, I came in and reviewed them on Sunday, and I had a couple of questions because a couple of them were cemetery invoices, which are being billed and paid out through the cemetery commission's funds. Just say so you know, because I questioned it and Sandra answered it. As she always does. Which, okay, which they, that's what's appropriate. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have their own budget. Okay. So this spreadsheet um, at, the, at the very bottom in the last shaded box in the middle of the spreadsheet is the total amount of outstanding taxes due. The spreadsheet is broken up into three categories, uh, amounts over 2,000, amounts under 2,000, and amounts under 1,000. <coughs> so I want to just talk about the amounts between 1,000 and 2,000. You um, should note that all, all of them but one are on an agreement or are, uh, oh, actually it's two. Half of them have agreements. All of them are making payments most of them are making fairly consistent payments. I don't have a recommendation for any action on these four taxpayers at the moment, except to keep a track that, you know, continuing to encourage them to pay. Mm -hmm. um, your, the prior practice um, was to send quarterly bills. I am now sending monthly bills. I, I think it's easier for people to remember bills if they see a bill every month. Whether they pay them is irrelevant, but it, it keeps that in front of their... Right, it keeps it on the uh, radar. It keeps it on the radar, thank you. <clears throat> um, with regard to the bills under $1,000, you will see that there are a couple of one center, five centers, mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, if allowable, and I believe it is, I would recommend that we simply abate those amounts under $1. It's a 49 cent stamp. If I elect not to send a bill, they're not going to pay it. I have no other means to bill it but to do that. No, that would be appropriate. To, it would seem we've to done be that. The way we've to done go. that before. I thought, I thought we, we put that something. in the policy. Didn't yeah, we? I thought we put it. Uh, no. Did we do something at we, time? I thought no. we did something. We wanted to do something, and I think the statute says that there's no place in the statute that allows for that, but other towns do it. East Montpelier, I think, abates. I mean, they don't even go through the whole abatement process. Their policy includes, like, anything under a dollar, you just write it off. Yeah. And Nemrick allows has that option. It does. And, and it's you can not, put in whatever dollar amount you want. And it's not an abatement. It's just a process run -off. such as what we did earlier today. It is simply right. an accounting process called abating the the um, abating the go the, ahead, sir. No, no, because no, <laughs> <laughs> no because sir. it will be something you know a fifteen year old finds extremely <laughs> important. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really just um, taking the taking the hit, and in this case, mm -hmm. it is a seven cent. Yes. Hit and I think that doesn't make sense okay. to send out a stamp. It <laughs> doesn't, and we won't collect it if we don't go for it. And you actually, these the two one centers are the tax sale people. Mm -hmm. It's just miserable to think they're going to come into the office and pay yeah. one cent. We did have it's not even worth your time. So it, anyway. it really isn't. And honestly, I did have a taxpayer come in. A bill escaped me, and it went out for two cents. And it was a bill to an elderly person. Oh, wow. I, I did not intend for that to go out because this meeting was coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
the daughter came in and paid the two cents. I felt so small. But um, spent three dollars. Well, I think we <laughs> really. I think we also need to awful. just update our um, our policy and put in a paragraph. And I was going to look on East Montpelier's website today, and I got busy with all this we other can, stuff. And we can do that. So we can just update our policy. I mean, you could even do it up to five dollars. Yeah, I think. You know, because it just by the time you take your it's not time. Worth it. That's like a ten dollars. This is not worth well, it. Well, if you send a bill every month, yeah, it doesn't, it's, it it's roughly quick. five dollars that you have spent yeah. on collecting mm -hmm. five dollars. So five dollars a month. Well, if you send a fifty cent bill, that's forty nine cents right. for a stamp plus paper and ink and, and your whatever. Account. So it's five dollars a month to send a bill. It, right. It's fifty cents a month to send $5 a bill, and if a year. you've sent, it's five dollars a year. A year. Okay. So if you're sending, $6. if it's costing you five dollars a year to collect, and arrears for one year of five dollars, you're you're base, you're not, right. You're we not just, gaining. Right. We just so, don't want everybody in town to send their tax bill in five dollars less. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So but we can always revisit. Right. So keep that in mind. Um, I, I need to read. <laughs> no one's got that. Time. You never know. There might be a campaign. Oh, there's always somebody. Well, they earned it. <laughs> um, yeah. if, um, if allowable, and, and if you don't mind, I would call uh, Jim Barlow. If allowable, I think for these small amounts, um, I would like to send them a letter to say any future tax payments, in particular, I'm thinking about payments on 2018 would first be applied to these arrears and then the balance to 2018. But I am not sure that that is statutorily okie-dokie. So what I, I okay. want to get a read on that. All right, wait a minute. That, these small amounts. You're talking about the? Under $1,000. Okay, not the $1. Right, because okay. they're just coming in and drips and drabs. Right. They're, they're, they're going to, and it's drips and drabs because they paid most all of it. Um, what, what my thrust is in seeing whether or not we can do that statutorily, mm -hmm. uh, and th there may be an absence of a prohibition, so we could do it if we want, mm -hmm. um, is that uh, we are going to apply for a significant loan, and presumably we're going to do that after we're audited, and mm -hmm. we get a good audit, I hope. And I'd like to see us have as few back taxes as possible at that right. time. And that audit won't be complete, or probably won't be complete, until the middle of our tax cycle. So mm -hmm. I think it would behoove the town to show 17 and 16 are really as small as we can possibly get them. Mm -hmm. and it, and to have agreements or or plans in place as to <clears throat> what we are doing for the amounts that are not paid. So that brings us up to the parcels that are owe in excess of $2,000. Um, I, you will note that all but one have uh, have no agreement at all. Mm -hmm. The one That's that does problem. have an agreement is making uh, uh, diligent payments so I, I don't have an issue with that particular parcel. Okay, wait a minute. So um, on the ones that are over two thousand, mm -hmm. it says payment no on all of them. Correct, and agreement no. Agreement no. The, so no agreement except for one. Okay, wait, how do we know? Okay, the one is this nine zero one two nine zero one two seven, and that one, that parcel has an agreement attached to it, and payments are being made. Okay. And fairly diligent, uh, like fairly diligently, in accordance with that agreement, okay. I, I would suggest no action on that. But for the rest, there are no agreements, and mm -hmm. other than bank payments or payments back in 2016, there are no payments on the part mm -hmm. of the parcel owner. And um, so I have to. Say, I understand people have bad times, but I think a firm, I, I would ask the board to consider allowing me to send a firm letter that simply says that we've noticed your outstanding mm -hmm. delinquency. The policy of the town is to have this paid by June 30th. Um, payments not made by June 30th, payments of full not made by right. June 30th may, res may result in a tax sale of mm -hmm. that parcel. Please call the office 
to um, make arrangements or to let us know but, what your intentions are. I mean, that's what we are. have done in the past. We've sent firm letters. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> but I, mean, I imagine you did. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, so it's, do you know I, the history, if I can interrupt you, do um, you know the history about as to why we don't have agreements on these? Is it that people they, won't sign the agreements? Oh, okay. It's, it's, that, it's not that they we are produced and them. sent and then yeah. not returned. Okay, that was my question. So that is why. Yeah, and that's a problem. Well, then firm letters sound good to me. Then. Yeah. Now, these aren't ready for tax sale yet. You'll send this firm letter. If they don't respond, then they, the next step is a tax sale. Well, is that the process? I would come back to the select board. And mm -hmm. since the policy is payment in full by June 30th, which is the end of our fiscal year, right? Uh, if there is no response or... Um, if I think the response is fully inadequate, if somebody calls and says I can only pay $25 a month, and oh, by the way, I can't pay next year's taxes either, I think the board should mm -hmm. consider how they want to handle that. Right. Uh, and it may be that we're going to let that go, or it may be that y you don't feel that is just in, mm -hmm. in to everyone else. But um, if they don't make a payment arrangement that's sensible, because they might need to, uh, or if they don't pay in full, I, I, I think you need to send them off for tax sale. Mm -hmm. And again, I think it, that if we are in a position to show that we have a plan to collect our delinquent taxes, it gives us a stronger position in terms of reaching well, out right. for a loan. Right. No, agreed. Can we, um, I just remember in the conversation last, was it last fall when we had some or a couple of parcels that we did go to the tax sale on? Right, exactly. And our our you know kind of general concern as a board of making sure that we had provided ample opportunity that and adequate notice and adequate notice. Um, so this seems to me a, the right time, uh, in addition to what you're already doing, Sandra, to just do a front porch forum notice. You know, it's there's no names attached, mm -hmm. but we could put in, you know, between FY sixteen and seventeen taxes. There's X amount uh, not That's paid. Standing. You all know who you are. Um, you are getting letters in your mail, but in case you're not opening them, here we are, front porch forum, saying, please open them. Please be in touch with the town office to make an agreement. I'm just thinking. I mean, I felt this way in the fall too. That if, if people are really struggling or whatever, then they're probably not even opening those. Yeah, but they know what it is. They just don't want to look at it. They don't want to look at it. But so, you know, put, just putting something in front porch forum is another right. way of putting just it right in front notice. Yeah, just a generic notice that, you know, but yeah, I mean, people know who they are. They don't, yeah. Yeah. they right. know it when they, they, they get it in the mail and they probably. Yeah. But to know, but I'm concerned that some of these people might be out of state non-resident. Well, they most certainly some of them are, and and they, um, and they may not read from the form. But issue. if that if that yeah. fit, I, yeah. I, well, you would still send a letter. Oh, I'm yeah. assuming, still right? But letter. if right. that makes the board feel more comfortable, because tax sales are very uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and we these are our neighbors and yeah. our people. Basically, if it makes you feel more no. comfortable, yeah. let's do it. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, I it's mean, confidential. I have the policy open and mm -hmm. you know you might grab a few lines out of there failure to pay the property taxes shifts the burden of one property owner's debt onto the property owners uh, in okay. town right and the that's not acceptable owners. you know you might be able to pull right. a few lines out of there yeah. you know yeah. yeah or if I don't know when you'll have time to draft it up but we could look at it quickly on maybe Wednesday oh sure I, I will I will do my best to have yeah. it for us on right. Wednesday I mean you know Cliff and I can just look it over before you post it um, and you wanted to contact Jim about the ones that are under a thousand dollars if we can actually say that you right. know, I, I would want I a legal opinion on that VLCT is in the process of reworking their delinquent taxpayers handbook and um, it's not out yet the one that I have is really old mm -hmm. and I would not want to rely on it uh, at particularly mm -hmm. so uh, okay. I'm just well, giving you, you a heads gonna, up yeah you're gonna I contact you Jim and then um, just CC me on the absolutely on the email so he knows that because he knows that people are supposed to go through the board first okay so 
Sandy, thanks for yeah, yeah, this is the great. Right. Seized by uh, parcel number, right? Right, the thing. Yep. right. and I like yes, that we're talking about good. it now instead of when you're ready to get to a it. hammer. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and that, well, I would I would prefer not to operate like that, but thank you that this is a good process for you because yes, is. this is a comfortable process for me. So okay. we're, yeah. we're good. Yeah, all the way around. Good. Thank you. Nice job. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Don't forget the ginger ale. Don't forget the ginger ale and the saltine crackers. Oh, yeah. And, and the cookies. Thank right? you, Judy. <laughs> I can deal with those. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Yep. Okay. Have a good night. Yeah. Take care. Good, good night, night, Alfred. Alfred. Right. Let's do the town hall um, update. update. And I asked Katie to put that in there, which she did. I got to say, having Katie available to put things in the folders and it's working out fine, right? Great. Yeah, it's it working out great right for me. Yeah. And she can post things on the website. So it's all good. We've got pews taken apart. So here's this is what we've been meeting every Wednesday. I think I don't think we've missed any Wednesdays, have we? Um, uh, there was one around the holidays. Yeah, we, I think. But that's kind of where things. If you're interested, we can just you know we can post these notes in the um, agenda folder, and you can see what's going on. It's all very clear. Um, and it keeps everybody up to date. Anybody that wants to know what's going on, we're just doing the town hall update. And oh, these, yeah. are the I, meeting, I these are the meeting notes from the last meeting. And Donna types them up every after every meeting. Wow. Awesome. So there's a lot. You know, there's a lot going on. There is a change since this was published. Um, if oh, we yeah. put the electric stove in the dumpster, we're going to have to pay to dump it. Um, so. It appears to be functional. It appears to have uh, housed some uh, rodents over the winter at some point. Excellent. So it is fully functional. Yes. Um, just turn on and get rid of it. But it looks like it hasn't been it. used that much. So we're probably going to uh, go ahead and uh, put it on front porch forum and what say is this, the, piano? the electric, electric stove. Electric stove. Yeah, electric stove. Oh, electric stove. If anybody wants it and is willing to put in some elbow grease, they're welcome to it. Uh, yeah, There's I bet nobody, it hasn't been used much. I bet my mice would be really happy to right. have Well, it. and Cliff <laughs> spent some time cleaning cleaning it, spraying oh, it, okay. moving it out of the kitchen area. So Yeah, we got it out, got it into the sunshine, which will take care of some As of long it. as it doesn't rain and then it ruins the yeah, electric stuff, right? Yeah, right. that dries out. Right, and also Cliff did some research on the player piano, and it's kind of, it was interesting. I what what I brand is it? Is it Bill Branson? Um, no, it's. Uh, I didn't bring I, it with I've me. I've got my email that I sent. Yeah, pretty. I mean, it was interesting the uh, the research that he did on it. Denise, you said you reviewed the orders and you yes you addressed the issues. Yes, everything is good. So it's uh, the manufacturer is Wilbur, which was the division of the Peace Piano Company. Um, it was the entry level model for that company. 1895. Mm. Yep. Oh. And this, our particular piano, based on this um, serial number, was probably made in 1920. Uh, the soundboard is intact. The bellows are shot. Um, needs some some TLC. And if you put all that into it, at most it would be worth about $1,500. Yeah. Do you guys have a piano guy? No, we're not going to fix it up. We're going to no, auction it as it is, yeah. and then somebody can yeah. pay to get it fixed. I, I have That's a, what I meant. I have yeah. one of these. I know what they cost to fix. Thousands of dollars. Yeah, okay. yeah. a lot more than fifteen. And it's, it's, if you do it yourself, it's a huge work effort to yeah. build it. The little um, seals, the leather seals in the bellows. Uh, yeah. It's not for the light of heart. Um, they're it's they're not they're you know it. they're not it's as cool. valuable as one would think. They sound cool. What are valuable are the reels. And then there are a handful of them that are considered valuable just because the rareness and the ornateness of them. Did you find any reels? No. I wonder if they're somewhere. I, I've got a whole cabinet on them. Huh. The way they've gone through that building, if there were any reels kicking around, they would have found, found them. Yeah. Found yeah. It. Got it. It's funny because they did find an old, what was that, brochure? In the, in the, an old Bible? A brochure mm -hmm. and they took apart some of the pews. There's this 
handout from, gosh, what was it from? Bulletin? From the church bulletin? Yeah, Bolt, church bulletin from really old. So oh, I, did that go to the historical society? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Yep. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna keep stuff like that so we can have it. So the pews, they're, 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 they've been dismantled, or some of them. So I, I spoke with Ernie Parrish. I think he wanted to talk to somebody. He was planning to talk to somebody about the pews and make sure they don't just that there's thought given to. Oh yeah, there's been them. a huge amount of thought. Going okay. Yeah. He's, he's, right. He's, he's was. They're Bach pews. pews. They're pretty unique. He's they're, been they're involved. Older. The Bach pews right. are the older. He's ones. been involved in working okay. on this project okay. with yeah, John McCall. Yeah, I know. Just want to make sure that. Right. He's and I think he wants two of the pews. Okay. Wasn't it you one too? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, I was a part of the discussion, but maybe it's just discussed already. But it seems to me there there might be a church out there that originally had box pews and people chucked them. And now they might want to restore the church to its original, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, yeah. interior. And box pews, those are old peg box pews. They, those are actually... Good night. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Similar, Good night like, ladies. Those are the old West Church, older style. So I, I don't know if there's any one out there that we put a notice out there if there's someone looking re that's restoring a church and looking for box pews. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how we put it. I mean, I think it's... It's been on the front porch for him, you know, Vermont the last time days. And I mean, David knows about him. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. Because he's involved. Yeah, but I don't know if he's done it. <clears throat> the thing people are really looking for are Parsons benches. The Parsons benches are the big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Don't got any of them, huh? Well, we do have some. Um, number three says Jim Clark should be Jim Clark, but I guess it doesn't matter. But anyways, this this is part what we do. Have the deacon's bench, like the long, the, de the yeah. long but independent. Right, right. and they got this the yeah. whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're not getting rid of those. No. Those are staying. Oh, okay. okay, we do have Yeah, okay. those are staying. Um, <coughs> so anyways, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. This is what we do every Wednesday morning for about an yeah. hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, this, um, under the Blue Barn players, the second bullet point about wanting to keep some of the holes in the floor, that was overruled. Right, yeah, we're not keeping holes in the floor so people can trip and break their ankle or something. For Why the did they want them? They wanted it so they could have the play, like it's supposed to be like this pirate thing, <clears throat> and they thought maybe the monsters, they could do something with the holes in the floor, the monsters coming out of the holes, but we said no. <laughs> we just, you know, if somebody's in there fixing the holes, just fix all the holes. Right. So that's so, so. Anyways, I just wanted to keep you abreast. Oh, those are big holes. Yeah, we're talking fairly. And, and it used to they had the holes so that the heat could rise up right. uh, from the so lower register, floor register, like register yeah. through to yeah. the upstairs, which made sense because yeah. the heat source was the wood stove downstairs, right. and the heat needed to get upstairs. The holes in the floor made perfect sense. Talk about all the old farmhouses. Yeah, nice. all of the Yankee, <laughs> Yankee ingenuity. No, but these are holes with no register. Well, the register's probably gone. No, they never had registers. Yeah. No, no, no it was old. just to allow heat to rise. And, and, they they had had a board. and they had a board that they would put back over it, over the hole in the summer when they weren't needing heat. Holy smokes. Right. What protected against people falling? Were they like it? They were under, under the, pews. the pews. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, uh, interesting. So yeah. the person sitting behind that particular pew could flip open the the floorboard. The floorboard. Oh, and heat. oh, I see. Yeah. I it's see. just no an upgrade to Neat. heating rocks yeah. and bringing it with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. Wrapping <laughs> <laughs> them in a blanket. Pretty neat. Yep. So, anyways, I just thought you might find it interesting once in a while to see That's what's cool. going on. And we've, I mean, it's been really interesting to learn some of the history. They've got most of the ceiling in the downstairs has been removed now. Yep. And uh, one of the discoveries is that there was well, there before. <laughs> um, looks like it never had plaster and lath on it. Um, it was actually an open beam ceiling mm -hmm. and it was stained. Huh. Um, so now they're looking at the possibility is can we bring some of that back and, and incorporate it into the design? Is it hand hewn or is it? Oh yeah, it's all hand wow, stuff. Yeah. It's that old. This is downstairs. Is downstairs yeah. ceiling. Yeah. Oh cool. So that so in our meeting space we'll have some charming characters. Maybe we're hoping to. So. The problem nice. is is to provide insulation for the upstairs. We need a layer of insulation. Right. Because right. right. in the wintertime we're not going to use the upstairs. Right. 
you know, as much. You know, right we could yeah. wouldn't use it probably in you know January, February, December. Kind we of could insulate between the beams halfway down, and then we're thinking because it's eight out. inch yeah. beams. We're thinking That's we could do four inches of insulation yeah, and yeah. still expose yeah. four we inches have of the beams. Fully right. exposed. We have exposed beams and lo and lots of insulation. Are they all yeah. in your beams? Oh yeah. Sanded by more. Oh, nice. Yeah, Roger See, made all beams and did the same kind of thing in our kitchen. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with living house, my house is 1840, but it's not all hand hewn. The frame is, but the joists aren't because there was a sawmill or two around here. Mm -hmm. And you could get <laughs> the vertical saw, and, yeah. which are, are not pretty at all because they, you know, they didn't care what, you know, some are this wide, some are this wide. <laughs> hand hewn. They're, you know. We must have been too far away from that. It's an added cost. So well, if you had less money, you could do that. But sorry, if you owned the mill or worked at the mill or you had a little bit of extra money. But our house is not a wealthy person's house. No. I don't know. So anyways, that, I just wanted to kind of give you an update, update on that. <laughs> uh, do beautiful. we need to mention the status of the RFP for the building? Um, yeah, the RFP, I think we told you, was going out for what RFP to raise the number building. four lifting the building lifting the building and R -A -C -E. we, <laughs> yeah no I, I don't think I voted for that one so that <laughs> RFP has gone out the bids are supposed to be back by the 22nd um, the building committee or representatives of the committee will open the bids and the select will review the bids and make a decision on the 28th the art clerk of the works along with Ernie and um, John or Scott's going to review them as well um, and give their recommendations for right. what they think would make the most sense. There's only two or this, three or yeah, four really house lifters in the in the area so it's pretty limited it's a pretty specialized it job. Is. Yeah. It is. You know? So we're just moving right along. We're going to be working on this donor database. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's it's just it's constant. Amazing constant. amount of volunteer effort here. So yeah, it is. It's huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. So, anyways, that's what we're doing. Donna and John are going to be gone May 24th through June 10th. So some of the. Um, Did you sign their leaf slips? Hmm? Did you sign their leaf slips? No, I could refuse to sign them. Yeah, you could keep them all summer. Denise will research serving alcohol on town property. I guess I better do that. We don't have a ban, do we? Hmm? We have a no ordinance that we ban alcohol. Insurance. Well, it's, you have to get a permit from the liquor thing. control. Oh, oh, insurance. So I got to remember to do that, right? Yeah, the idea would be that... Um, For when they have shows, Maybe you know, the corners could offer to cater as well as yeah. serve alcohol. They would be willing to invest in the permit if, with the assumption right. that they could do yeah. this at several events. Yeah, great. Right, because they don't want to, they don't like an invest your mission thing. Right, yeah, where you, they would sell some snacks and some beer and wine, basically, is what it was mm -hmm. come down to. But first we have to see if it's even possible to do it. Right. I'm always looking for options to get drunk, so. <laughs> John, there's a camera up. here. Then bring your own bottle. <laughs> Actually, right. I'm a wimp. I wish I could get drunk. <laughs> he uh, said facetiously. Well, three times a year. All right. Are we ready to move on? Any more questions about the town hall? Thank you for doing what you yeah. guys are doing. Sounds it's great, guys. Yeah. It's it awesome. Is, it's really interesting. All right. Um, Central Vermont ISP. We appointed David Healy. He was out of the country, missed the first meeting. We can appoint an alternate. Uh, I was going to ask you about this. So Scott Bassage asked if he could be the alternate. Please. Is everybody good with that? I said I would yes. put it on the agenda to, to appoint an alternate. Yes. It was brought to my attention that we were at AWOL at the very first meeting. Right. And I was a little bit upset about that. Right. Understand. He was in Greece or something. So. so nobody knew. Is he generally back? Is he going to be able to do it? I know he expressed interest. Yeah. Um, I'll be in touch with David to let him know that Scott's the alternate. So if he's not going to attend. And Scott could attend all the meetings. He just yeah. wouldn't be able to vote mm -hmm. as the Yep. So, um, which I'll probably be in, is not a big deal. It's probably the same it thing seems, where you. Yeah. Well, we can it talk about it again like later. We need to. Two representatives because I, it's going to be hard to catch up. It's not like 
Well, that's yeah. what Denise is saying. If Scott can go to all the meetings and he can have an yeah. opinion. Right. Right. The fact that yeah. he's not yeah. voting is probably yeah. not a big deal. I'm not, I'm really unhappy that David didn't show up. I gotta say, you volunteer for something, you gotta do it. The opening meeting. Yeah. Okay. So you need so, a motion. So I mean, I mean, we need a motion to appoint Scott Bassage as the alternate to the Sunny Lamont ISP. I'll move that. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I'll let David know and Jeremy know and Scott know. Okay. Good. Um. <clears throat> all right. L E O P. Here we go. Elemental P. Yeah. Kind of. <clears throat> but not really. Local emergency operations plan. Toby and Nick worked on this, and it's all updated. There really wasn't much to update. It really doesn't Nick, change. Nick is Nick. Emlyn. Okay. He, we pointed him last meeting as the assistant to Toby. The, the, Toby's the emergency management yep. okay. director. Okay. Coordinator. coordinator. I guess I'm the director, he's right. the coordinator. Um, and we appointed Nick as the alternate, as the assistant. Good to have depth. Right. And I'm planning to meet with Nick to see if there's, I mean, I looked at um, East Montpelier's LEOP on their website, and they have a lot more meat to it. One being that they have an animal resource during emergency plan. And I'd like to look into that at some point to see, you know, do we have a place that would take animals, I'm thinking Lucky Dog Farm, I'm gonna, I want to talk to Merritt Kennedy. <clears throat> she has the um, boarding kennel there. You know, and then how many big farms, I mean, we don't have the farms I don't think that East Montpelier has. But we do have, like you have cattle, <clears throat> um, Doug Lilly, Lois Franks. You know, they should be listed somewhere in our plan as needing assistance possibly if there's a huge flood or no power for however many days for milking, you know. I see what you mean. They yep. should, there should be something, some kind of a plan. Yep. So I'm going to, I mean, right now we just need to approve what we have, but I'd like to continue working on maybe beefing it up some and coming up with this animal piece of it that we don't have now. So I would need a motion to approve the updated version of the operations plan 2018 so, and authorize and I need to sign it. Do you want to amend that to allow have me sign it? Yeah, and authorize Denise to sign it. Uh, yeah. And is there a second? Yeah, I did that. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And just note that with that one, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it under control. You make it up as you go. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, and just note that there is a quorum of the board that has attended the training, so we're good there. I've done the training. That might be a good one to this, that animal issue. Seems like one that Online. that maybe Doug would be interested in thinking about. With us. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be a good way for me to interact with him. So you guys all did the online training? No, we went to the training in oh, person. You to yeah. yeah. So you might just want to check with um, CBRPC. Did you get a certificate? Yeah, a long time ago. But just to make sure that that, that oh, you're on okay. to make sure you're on file as having done it. No, seriously, to make sure you're on file. Have Laura can check. Laura yeah, there's a way to check. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just ask her to double check. All right. So, I, so am I the only one who hasn't done that training mm -hmm. at this point? Okay. I did it because of my state job. How often is it done? I'm not positive. It might be able to do it online. Yeah, okay. do it have an online thing. Okay. You get through the LCP? I am. No, no, no. no. There's the Central Vermont Federal. Regional Planning Commission. Okay. Well, it's okay. A and federal, it's, it's a federal, federal website. Federal and website. emergency management. Yeah. For Coordinate. Uh, Coordinate it. So you might look on both websites and see if there's an FEMA. online one. Okay. Right. Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission I'll and the there. State um, Emergency Management Division. Okay. Emily Harris. Is it like hours and hours or a couple hours? A couple hours. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So we have that. Um, it's really dry. Yeah, it's, so. it's I wrote an emergency plan for 
for a health center last fall. So. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, you'll you'll get the rhythm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. So I just want to add, I mean, it's not really totally germane, but I was told well, some of these names out of, there was an, an individual, a carpenter, who fell off a ladder, a really high ladder in Cowles. Recently? Up on Apple Hill. A few months ago, in the winter. Oh, no. And was seriously injured, <gasps> injured broken pelvis and legs and all sorts of stuff. And oh. The report I got about our ambulance service, the wonderful care they got, and how great a job Toby Talbot did. I will say, he'll, he's... His care and his hand. He's, he's wonderful at this stuff. amazing. Stuff. And that's been my experience with, with him. Right. The he's like been, they've the been at my them. house. But, you know, gushing praise. So I just yeah. want to let you guys all know it's our money spent on the ambulance is well spent. Right? Yeah. You no, know, I when agree. When you have issues like that. Right. It's life and death. You realize the value of this investment. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, Julie Joel. noted, very yes. nice. Yeah. <coughs> Let's put that, you yeah, were, that's you were in the, can that go in the minutes? I don't know, it's <laughs> fine, but no, that's really nice, no, though. Great. No, they do, they do an excellent job when they come to your house, because it's always, you know, you're kind of nerved yeah. up, and they're very calm, and yeah, they're, no, they're very, very good. I've had them at my house very times. very serious fall. That sounds really scary. Lucky to be with us and not paralyzed. And really? So, yeah. Wow. Young guy. Oh my. Mm -hmm. All right, so I just thought I'd um, give you some updates from what I've been doing and that kind of thing. Um, I don't think there's anything else on the regular agenda. So let's see. All right, so we've, I've been looking at, as I said, the East Montpelier emergency plan and the animal thing. I'm gonna talk to Merrick Kennedy um, because she has the kennel about a, you know, would she be available if people had to leave and needed to put their pets somewhere. And the nice thing is, is they live up a little high. Mm -hmm. so maybe it'll work. I'll ask her. Um, we did the town update, town hall update, and we'll try to remember to put the notes from the town hall meetings in the upcoming agenda folder. Mm -hmm. Usually it'll be like two, because we meet every week. Um, we changed the office phone system just a little bit. The way it was set up before, if the phone rang, there was no voicemail. So you just got a busy signal. So it made sense, and Judy and Sandra asked us about it. Um, I said, yeah, just put it, sure. You know, you call the town office and nobody answers because they're on the other line. It makes sense to have voicemail. So that's done. <coughs> RB would was contacted to do a little bit of what they could to upgrade the speed of the internet, but today the speed was horrible. So RB is checking into it again to see what's going on. Um, yeah, and you have problems all the time, right, John? Oh, no, it, it was just a couple, three days. We've had excellent service okay. until three days ago. And well, and something awful. happened here today where the speed was just like, you couldn't even type a sentence on the computer. It would just like, Sit there. Sit yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So anyways, RB Tech is working to see what it is. They thought it was Judy's monitor, which I don't see how a monitor could really affect it, but anyways. And the other fix was going to be something like a twenty to forty thousand dollar fix, which would be to contact Comcast and have I have what do they call that? Comcast uh, Xfinity service. Uh so that would be available here in the office. That's going to be twenty to forty thousand dollars. Oh, you, you want to pay us money? And if you pay them money, they'll do anything you want. Oh yeah, no, forty thousand dollars on the cable. No way. Well, and the issue there too is our oh, tag right. brought up is that basically you're paying for them to extend their interest structure so that they can then charge other people because that's right. 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 And unlike the, right. the utility extending a utility line, you don't get necessarily reimbursed, or right. do you? No. 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 So, anyways, well, and we got the whole ISP. I, we got the whole ISP thing yeah. going on, so hopefully, eventually, that will take care of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Poplar Cemetery. I got an email from the Cemetery Commission. Which one is Poplar? I'm not sure where it is, but it's on the border of East Montpelier and Callis, so it must be. Is that on um, Route 14 next to Nancy Pulsar's house? I don't know. Maybe. Where's Nancy Pulsar? So right, right after right the, <laughs> <laughs> right on. Right 14. you know where Todd Croto lives? Yes. 
Yeah, so it's just before that. It's right just on the bend. Just north of that? Yeah. Pardon? Just north? It's right, it's... I don't know north okay. or south. No, I think south. Yes. Oh, south of Todd. You go past, if you're heading toward Montpelier, you go past no, Todd's? No, we're heading to Callis. We always think head to Callis. Okay, we're heading right from after the north Barry Mount to Callis. Callis. Right after the North Mount Pelier Pond. Okay. Right. The yeah, next cool. house, oh, there's a little yellow one, but yes. the next big one with a barn, that's the Nancy Paulson. Okay. She used to be the cook at the kitchen at the school. Oh, okay. this is and then there's a bend. Okay. Yeah. There, I don't where she lives. Yeah. Okay, so nothing. Thank you. But I think that that... You were saying, Denise? Yeah, I don't know that it matters. But anyways, the Poplar Cemetery is currently owned privately, but the association is going to fold, and they don't, they don't have enough money. And when a cemetery is owned privately and it goes under, the town gets to take it. We have to? We have to. I'm going to double check, but... And so do we get any of the money they have in the account? Yes. <laughs> but it's not enough to even take care of. And if there was any liability, I'm not saying this is true, but if somebody absconded with funds or anything, we don't have to, there's no liability accruing to us. We're not responsible well, for these are, monies. Well, this is what we need to check yeah, out, that's all a this Jim stuff. Barlow thing. Right. So I've got Jim's name next to checking that out because we don't want to get, as you say, we don't want to get stung. Yeah. I don't want to accept liability. Right. Um, Checking with the issue that came up with um, the cemetery workers claiming unemployment mm. and us having to pay out unemployment, which we never did before. Um, oh, Blue Cross Blue Shield domestic partner. I finally made some a little bit of headway today. I got All right. It. I finally got myself taken up the ladder to a supervisor. I think, mm -hmm. who has, and I didn't get a chance to talk to Sandra, and I didn't get a chance to call this person back yet because I was doing all this other stuff today for the town. So I'm working on an answer about this domestic partner issue that one of the road crew asked us about. Mm -hmm. Yep. So stay tuned on that. Um, I've contacted the school board to see about doing a joint meeting to follow up on part of our discussion about the trash depot. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so stay tuned that hopefully they can come to one of our meetings. Um, oh, okay, here's one I need some help on. There's a few, Ernie, um, Ernie Parish used to be what Andy Felice now does. What? Unless I'm misunderstanding, I'm, uh, I'm interrupting, but I'm looking at the RV Tech invoice, 50 gigs of cloud storage quantity four, so that tells me it's 200 gigs and it's a hundred dollars. Is that a hundred dollars a month? Probably. Yeah. And that is way out of line with what they try. I have one terabyte for um, nine, 999 a month. I don't understand this. Maybe it's a year. Does it say? This is four quantity. It's I don't know what this is. We can ask Sandra. It would be nice to know what, the, what we're getting, what yeah. kind of value. I don't remember seeing those invoices before. No, I don't either. So I'm thinking it, no, might, be, and it might be annual. Okay. But let's make a note. That's, to, still, that's still crazy. We can make a note for, in the minutes to ask Sandra about it. get a terabyte this. for that price. Yeah. But it might be a, a year. That's what I'm saying. You should get yep. a terabyte for that price per year because I pay nine ninety nine per mm -hmm. month, um, and it's a terabyte. Up to a terabyte. I don't know what that is. That's a lot. I know it's a lot of terabyte. That's ten times what that is. Uh, five times what this is. Okay. Um, and so if this is a hundred dollars a year, it's about you know what seven fifty or mm -hmm. eight fifty a month. Um, I'm paying a dollar fifty more, and I get more five times the amount. So I don't, right. well, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it. maybe it's part of their laborers included or something. But I don't know. Well, we'll make a note to check into it. We can ask Sandra and Judy okay. for more information. Okay. Uh, okay, so as I was saying, Ernie Parrish used to be Gospel, Gospel Hollow Warden. Um, now Andy Felice is doing that, and I found a list, and I didn't, I don't think I brought it with me, I should have. I found a list of duties that includes like turning the water off in the winter, turning the water on, emptying the toilets, you know, things like that, and it's 50 bucks a month. He did come over here and put the screens on the windows, um, fixed some leaky valve over in the town hall. 
and did other stuff, and that's what you're going to get for 50 bucks a month. There's a few additional things that need to be done that I don't think fall within the 50 bucks, but I think it's something that we could ask him to do and see how much he would charge us. Um, one being to the ladies want to remove some of the countertop to have more space to set up mm -hmm. office space like the listers, that kind of stuff. And to put a build a cover over the generator so when the snow falls off the roof in the summertime it doesn't smash the generator. In the winter. Right. So things like that. Um, and if you remember, John and Rosa remember, we had the issue with the roof that in the back here that was put on upside down. Our operations manager was going to take care of this and make sure it got fixed and got done. I'd like to see if we can get Andy to help come up with a plan to fix that. We might want to, you know, we might want to get some estimates on that. Tom Frost was involved. Um, you know, it may need a roofer to fix this. But all I understand is Andy and I know Ernie, Ernie Parrish work together, right? Those, do Andy and Ernie work I together? I don't believe so. Or is it so. Jim Clark and Andy? Something like that. Jim Clark and Andy, maybe, but Ernie's on his own. But Ernie has all the standing mm -hmm. scene, the standing scene, right? So I guess what He's I'm got all the tools. I guess what I'm looking for our purchasing purchasing policy says something about five thousand dollars, and that's what we're using when we're talking about town hall stuff. But talk to Andy. If he doesn't yeah. have stuff, Ernie, I know. <coughs> but he may not have the time and schedule. So. Well, that's just it. So I'd like that's to get somebody business. going on some of these things sooner rather than later. And if they're a few hundred or a thousand bucks, is it okay to tell them to go ahead and move the counters and build the cover over the generator? Mm -hmm. I think so. mm -hmm. And if it seems like it's something that's a really bigger deal, I'll bring it back to the board for approval. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. what do they want? They want to remove these counters? Some of it. Not all of it. But we will find out on Wednesday because this just barely came up. But when we meet with the office staff on Wednesday, we'll find out what it is they really want to do. Okay. Here's the email from the screen. Yeah, yeah right there. This is where they talk Go about Go around the, the office main room, so I guess it's this. Yeah. Yeah, remove the, the counters, counters, all of it. Where the cabinet used to be, is that over there? Yeah, that's in the corner. The glass. No, the cabinet, glass, glass cabinet yeah, used to be in that there. corner. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really, really, I gotta say, it's really noisy in here when, like, for instance, we're having the town hall meetings. And, you know, there's five or six of us. Those guys are in there working, the phone's ringing. There's people coming in and out to go into the vault to look at records. A lister might be, a couple of listers might show up mm -hmm. to do work. It is really, really noisy. That's why we need space over there. Right. So anyways, that's just something to, we can check into. We can talk further with Sandra and Judy on Wednesday to figure out exactly what exactly they're talking about. And maybe getting a Ian to come in and do an estimate of what it would cost. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. I'm pretty happy with that. That's good. Um, the other <coughs> thing is, and hopefully Alfred won't watch the video, but we're all set to do Alfred's celebration on Thursday, the 17th at noon. Moe's Backyard Barbecue is coming to, right, to do the lunch. We ordered a clock, um, which we have yet to figure out if and when it's ready, who's going to pick it up in Is this Colchester. the train that we're all showing up for? Or is that? No. The, you mentioned a training earlier. At the oh, no, no, no. That's a different. That's thing. actually for real? That's for real. Okay. Yeah. So what does Alfred think is? I, the only road crew member that has email is Jake, the young guy, Jacob. Oh. <laughs> so, yes, um, he he's got it on his iPhone. He does, he does. <laughs> he, he told Bruce and, and um, Bruce and Paul about it and told them to keep it quiet. I called Ed and Dana, who are both coming. We've got the select board, um, Katie, if she wants to come. Um, we have Sandra, um, Judy, Donna, because she's worked with Alfred for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Like Don, <coughs> any of the older guys? No, I didn't include Don Singleton and stuff. I thought it should just be more. Mm -hmm. So Ed. Ed and Dana, yeah. and the road crew that's there, yeah. us, um, office staff, Toby. Sounds like a good party. 
So that'll be like at noon. Okay. So I'm leaving it up to the road crew to figure out how to make sure Alfred's there at noon. And hopefully we don't have like some weird freak storm while they're all out on the road. Um, so that's well, yeah. even, even if people show up with food, he won't. <coughs> he will have no idea what's going on. Right. Right. This is unprecedented, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think so. But it's a nice it's party. Movie, I think. Party lady here again. Yeah. At it. <laughs> Gotta have some part of this. Party. Stuff, right? Every day is a reason for a party. Um. Yeah, you wouldn't believe how hard it was to find somebody to do the food, though. I thought it'd be easy. Why? Because it's out here? It's out here. The stores don't really do much stuff. Leslie would have done it, but she was out of town, and I needed to get somebody lined up. You know, East Calistro, they would have done something more than just sandwiches. But I thought it should be something a little nicer than just a pizza in a box. Thank you. You know? Yeah. Alfred deserves. Yeah. 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 And it's also, Katie's been doing a fabulous job. I send her stuff. She posts it in the folders. Are we having a party for her? No, she hasn't been here 20 years yet. Oh. <laughs> um, she posts stuff in the folders. <laughs> she posts stuff on the website for me, the agendas and whatever else I need. Um, she's going to do the spreadsheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had, she's taken over that. Um, so, kind of share on the workload a little bit. Good. And I think it's going okay, don't you? Great. Yeah. Well, Women are taking over. Well, Cliff's been a big help, though, I gotta say. He's been a, a big help. He's surrounded by He's hard working my... women, man. <laughs> right. I'm gonna keep up with him, Cliff. I don't know. He knows his place. It's no different than it is at home, John. I was gonna say. <laughs> oh, really? Really? <laughs> you have the same problem at home? a hard working way. Oh, at home, I think Okay. Um, and that's it. And it's 9 o'clock again. Cool. Yay. I, Thanks, Mark. I timing. was in the bathroom at the beginning of the wow. meeting when maybe you said additions to the minutes okay. or whatever. Um, and I just had two quick things. We um, haven't done the minutes yet. No, I mean to the agenda. Oh. Changes to the agenda. Um, I think I ha might have mentioned this to you. Um, I've noticed that Steve Sparrow on Lightning Ridge has oh, just right. like put some dirt almost like making curb cuts um, just above Mike Guerin's house. Um, there's two there. Are they and, temporary? Then, and then there's already a third one with a couple of piles of material that hasn't Ooh. been smooth. So that would be like, I don't know if he's just going to make all of his land absolutely level with Lightning Ridge, yeah, but there's two actually accesses that they're using mm -hmm. um, that I haven't seen any curb cut permits no, for me um, And so, anyway, well, so I might not be curb cuts. You might just be, like you say, trying to level. Well, no, but they're using it, you know, to get equipment in there. Yeah. And so, um, and then the other one was near your house. Jim Hogue put fences right up to the gravel, um, fence posts and some. They're in the towns right away. Agricultural fence. Well, it is, but. Um, yeah, that's exempt. And it's for an ag. And it's for an agricultural purpose too, actually. I, I it know, is. I know a little bit about that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Was know. it for cows or something? Horses. No, it's not for horses. It's for the chickens. The chickens. Yeah, it's keeping the chickens, chickens out of the road so they don't get smushed. Yes. And keeping things out of the chicken. Farm. Right, like the fox that shows up at everybody's house when they have chickens. Mm -hmm. Neighbor's Far dog. Farmers yeah. do this every Your dog? spring. Well, I just yeah. thought in his case, where the road is particularly narrow, yeah. I mean, literally, there's the post and there's like that much grass between the post and the, and the gravel, mm -hmm. and it's narrow right in front of his house. And so if it wasn't quite so narrow, I wouldn't be so concerned, but... I wondered if, if Alfred would bring it up. Um, but if it's agricultural, then it's so right? Great. Regulated, but but you know we can have a conversation. And just full disclosure, I do the same thing. Right. You know, I like it's temporary. That they're up, they're up for a week or whatever. Like, like but this doesn't cows, sound temporary. This road doesn't sound temporary. temporary. But I don't know. I when I drive by your house, it doesn't seem like these seem like well, so I, I close to the road. I have a permanent fence that's set way back. Yeah. And then in between a permanent and a road, I put a I basically create a lane and the cows go through there. Mm -hmm. it's free food. But so. yours is. This sounds like it's different. So it's just really bring, narrow. I'll bring it's this, really narrow. I haven't 
Alfred, I guess. Yeah, I haven't talked to him about. I haven't talked to him ab yeah. about it, but I know that that's. I know that that's the reason. Mm -hmm. The reason for it. Well, yeah. and it's true. You have chickens, and just the other day, one of our chickens got snatched again by a fox while Roger was taking. The daytime. One, yeah, right oh, in the yeah. daytime. Right, you know where my pool is, right? Right there by the pool. A stupid fox is standing there. Killed, took a chicken, but you gotta leave your dog outside. No, because it'll take my dog. Oh, oh, you dog. Well, the dog will take the chicken. Yeah, gonna happen. yeah no, <laughs> gonna get hurt. right. It's so it's not gonna be pretty, especially if somebody gets get one of, when I get one of my dogs. That no fox foxes. is gone. Oh, right now, I'm not letting anybody kill this fox because it's getting the chickens or whatever. I won't go there. That's our fault. Um, our well, the so. I mean, so well, Roger, he's got the fence put back up, only it's bigger now, of course, with the chickens. So they're safe again. I don't think I don't think there's an intent that they would be. So when I when I think about the right away, I particularly think about the snowplow, and I don't think that that's at all an issue because in the winter they're in the that greenhouse. He takes that fence down. It's temporary, right? It is temporary. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you go. It's temporary. temporary. Temporary fence. Yeah. 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 No, because of, yeah, in the, in the winter the chickens have a different home. Yeah. Okay. And it's not on the road, so. Right. It's in the town's right of way. It's agricultural use, but it's temporary. It's but temporary. we could ask Alfred to check into Steve's. Yeah, Sparrow's and it's in a narrow fashion. section of road. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But the it's road not is narrow. Right. But it's not in the road, and so. You know, oh, no. It's three inches from the. No. Road. It, no. You might got to get them to move it back a little bit. It's worried about mirrors here. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I just think it's really narrow right there. It's right across from his hip. Well, the first house. thing to do is to ask Alfred to go yeah. and look at the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the first step. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can do that. Mm -hmm. And then get some more information. That's all all right. right, so now we need minutes. And they're in the well, Just as a, as a broader policy, I, I, I just wanted my opinion statement. And I do have a bias. I do the same thing. But I would have the pin, this opinion anyway, I think, you know. Farmers historically have set up their fence, electric fences every spring. I know David Morse, he's very, you know, he and Stan, they, they always, everything was by, by the calendar, by the clock. And David put up this fence, electric fence posts every spring on the Martin farm. And then every fall, he'd just lay them down. He'd pop them up down. and lay them down mm -hmm. for the snow plow. And every spring they went up, those were all in the right of way. And so if there's an issue with mm -hmm. setback for cars, and we can have that conversation with them. But mm -hmm. as a general rule, I don't think we should be regulating farmers or attempting to interfere no, with I mean, farmers I think, in the I right think, way. I think we've got to remember, right of way is public prop or private property. And as long as we're not interfering with the road. And, and right, I thought we had, yeah. we were doing that. Because it doesn't our. No, I know, I just want to be, I just, just want to make clear. What you're saying is, is you we're know. We're not looking to. Uh, that we want to err on the side of supporting the farmers. Right. That our, that right. our um, presumption, um, you know, absent a compelling reason, is right. that right. it would be fine. Well, right. and right. I mean, we've dealt. We don't need, they don't need to get it approved. <laughs> no, I mean we've gone through this okay. before. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I just want to make sure we. we I just want to clarify again. We have new members. Yeah. Two. New work. No, not that new anymore, guys. Sorry. No, sorry, I can't use that. Anymore. <laughs> um, okay, minutes. We had the special meeting and the regular minutes for the twenty third of April. I didn't have any yes. changes. I think I they looked fine. fine. I looked at them. I looked at the meetings, but they're... yeah. So, can we get a motion to approve both sets of minutes? Yes. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And are you abstaining? I'm gonna abstain. Can you with me? Okay. And we, I don't think we have any personnel stuff to talk about this time, do we? We are... 9.08. Wow. Are you guys impressed or what? 9.08. This is great. Last time it was around 9 o'clock, too. And we started late because of the... Mm -hmm. okay. There you go. All right. Good. So Thank we'll you, everyone. Can we have a motion right to it? Okay. Second. All those in favor, which we don't even know the vote on, but anyways.